today we're at Vago Maze and Winery, which is about, oh, I guess about a 30 minute drive out of Port Macquarie CBD. Very easy to get to, it's up in the beautiful hinterland. Uh, now there's a range of things on offer to see here, so we're going to have a little bit of a tour with Ian, who's one of the founding family members, um, but he's also the landscape architect of this incredible maze that I'm in right now. Uh, which is beautiful, except that I've no idea to get out. So if I can find my way out and actually find Ian, then we can uh, hopefully begin the tour. So wish me luck. I'm pretty tall, but even me, I can't see over the top of these hedges. So uh, we'll see how we go. Hey Ian, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm good, thanks. How are you? Very good, thank you. A little bit out of breath after uh, finding my way through your amazing maze there. Oh, amazing, yeah. literally. <laughs> Terrible dad joke. Um, I know it was uh, your brainchild, the maze, wasn't it? It was actually you that came up with the concept and, and created the whole thing. Yeah, that's right. Um, I'm a landscape architect. Uh, so back in 2006, I came up with the idea of having a maze here at the family vineyard and winery. Yep. And um, yeah, it's been going great ever since. Well, it looks absolutely fantastic. I mean, uh, how, how, how often do you have to, you know, it looks like there's an awful lot of work to keep it maintained and keep those edges nice and clean. It looks so pristine down there. Yeah, it takes a little bit of work. Uh, we've actually got a machine that we drive around and trims the side and top and yes. uh, there's a little bit of hand trimming involved, but it's not too rigorous. Yep. And how long on average does it usually take people to sort of get round? Is it... Uh, uh, if you're good, it'll take you half an hour. If you're no good, it'll take you about an hour. Yep. Maybe longer. Maybe yeah. longer. Well, I think I don't know how long it took me, but probably longer than that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so tell us a bit about, about the estate here. You've obviously got a lot of different things to do. Yeah, that's right. So it's a family farm. Um, we originated with the uh, um, wines and the vineyard. Yep. Uh, and then, yeah, branched out into a hedge maze. And um, we've got a little chocolate shop here as well. Yep. Um, cafe. And, yeah. That's great. So you've got something for everyone, and I guess all year round as well. You've always got things happening. Yeah, that's right. So uh, winter and summer holidays, we actually have a, a field maze, I guess. Yep. Uh, so a seasonal uh, maze that changes. So in winter, we do it out of mustard. In summer, we do it out of corn. Oh, that's nice. And we're actually going to trial sunflowers this year. Oh, as well. excellent. That's great. And, and, and obviously, wine is a big, big part of the story here as well. Yeah. How many different varieties do you actually do you grow here? Uh, you tripped me up on that one. It's probably <laughs> about nine or so. Yep. But we do quite a few different styles of wine. So we've got Chardonnay. We do about three different styles of Chardonnay. Yep. Uh, and a ma main variety is a grape called Chambersen. Okay. Uh, we make a full-bodied red out of that and also a rosé. Yep. I can see you've got a nice uh, picnic area up the back there for people just to hang out and blaze around on the grass and no doubt the parents have a perhaps a cheeky little wine here and there while yeah, the kids run off and explore. Yeah, that's right. So there's plenty of space around here. Uh, kids usually head off into the maze and the parents sit up here and enjoy a tasting or a platter or two. <laughs> it sounds absolutely perfect. Yeah. Well, we've definitely locked in with the weather today. It's absolutely cracking here as yeah, well. Yeah, it's a beautiful day. And school holidays too. Um, seems like it's pretty busy. Yeah, we've been flat out these school holidays, which is great to see. Yeah. And um, yeah, uh, these school holidays, sort of, as it warms up toward the uh, Port Macquarie area, yeah, we get to see a lot of visitors. Fantastic. And have you noticed, um, you noticed a lot of new visitors coming through, maybe more locals, or obviously with everything that's happened with the pandemic and different kinds of people coming? Uh, we're getting a lot of people out of Sydney. So, a lot of people out of Sydney. Yeah, weekend trippers from Sydney. Yep. Um, Newcastle as well. So, yeah. Yep. And it's a pretty easy drive from Sydney, so it's four hours or so. Yep. Um, so, yeah, great weekend destination. Fantastic. Well, it's great to see some new faces here, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Now, there is a lot to see, so I think we're going to have a, gonna have a bit of a wander through the, the vines and actually see where it all begins, I guess, from a wine perspective. Yeah, happy so, to show you around. All right, you lead the way, all off right, we go. Thanks. thanks we'll head Ian. over this way. Awesome. So, here we are now where it all begins in the beautiful vines. So, yeah. What, uh, what vines are we looking at here, Ian? What have we got on, on, on the crop uh, So here? these vines are Chardonnay. Yep. And they're in the early stages of uh, spring growth, or sort of late stages of spring growth, I guess. Yep. Um, you can see here there's a, a little bunch of grapes oh, look starting at that. to form. Amazing. Uh, so they've just finished flowering, and they're starting to fatten up a little bit. Yep. Oh, it's incredible to think that they literally start from that and end up in yeah. a bottle, being yeah, done. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so over the next few months, they'll, they'll fatten up. Uh, they'll become nice little golden, um, yellowy golden berries. Yep. And um, we, or here at our vineyards, we pick uh, late January, early February. Okay, right. 
So, and, and that would be a pretty involved process, I'd imagine. A lot of people around, and is that a draw card for people to come and sort of watch and that kind of thing? Do they? Uh, we do it very early in the morning, right? So when, the, when the grapes are cool, yep. Because uh, we don't want them to be warm. Yep. So yeah, there's usually nobody around <laughs> other than the picking crew. Right. Uh, but we do have in January a grape stomping competition. Oh, nearly, okay. So, um, yeah, part of our, our jazz day sequence, which we have uh, one jazz day each month. Every month? Um, yeah, in, sorry, it's our February um, jazz day. Yeah. We have a grape stomping competition. Fantastic. Where, yeah, we um, give people 10 kilos of grapes yep. and they've got to try and squeeze as much juice out of it as possible. <laughs> Unfortunately, we had to cancel it this year. Oh. Um, not due to COVID, but because we had flooding on the road right. on the way in. So right. It was just a bad day. But yeah. Yeah, hopefully we can go ahead with it next year. That sounds like a lot of sure fun. Yeah. And what, what, all different kinds of grapes? Or is it just at uh, that point you've got, I guess you've got different ones every month, I suppose, have you? Or? Yeah, so the, the different grapes ripen up at different times. Yep. Um, so white grapes generally uh, we pick first and red grapes um, sort of towards the end of our vintage. Right. And what is it that makes um, grow, you know, making wine, growing wine, making wine so good what, in terms of the climate here in Port Macquarie? Uh, in Port Macquarie, we've got a maritime climate, so we get a lot of sea breezes yep. come through, especially in the afternoon. Um, that's useful for uh, just air mo movement throughout the vines. Um, it is a difficult climate, I guess, in terms of humidity growing mm. the grapes. Yep. Um, it's a bit challenging, um, but yeah, we've selected varieties that grow well here. Yeah, right. And what's your favourite tipple? Have you got a favourite that you, you really like? Uh, yeah, my favourite's the Chambersen. It's a red variety. Okay. Uh, it's a specialty for our area. Yeah. Uh, grows really well in this humid climate. Mmm. And in terms of best sellers that you have, in terms of the wine range here, what uh, can you tell us a bit about that? What's the uh, most popular? Yeah, well, at the moment, the most popular is actually a blueberry wine. A so blueberry? Made from blueberries. Oh, amazing. Uh, we don't grow the blueberries here on the farm, but we get them... Um, from a bloke up at Coffs Harbour who he's got a blueberry grading machine oh. and um, yeah we get his seconds I guess and um, yeah we make them into wine. Blueberry wine, I don't think I've ever heard that before. Well, we have to try one. Oh we'll have to try there. What's yeah. it actually called? What's the name? Uh, it's called Spritzy Blueberry. Spritzy Blueberry. Oh no, sorry, Shimmering Blueberry. Shimmering Blueberry. Yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, that sounds very nice. Yeah. Well I think we're about to go and uh, have a look at a little bit behind the scenes and see what the process is to producing the end product of all this magical stuff here. So yeah. Uh, sounds yeah, good. Yeah, let's go and have a look, eh? Hey? All right, thank all right you. sounds good. Uh, it blows my mind that this we start here and we get to yeah. Yeah, it's here. a big process. It is. Uh, now this is exciting. Now we're inside the winery and we're going to get a bit more of a, a bit more of a rundown, I guess, of what happens in here. So can, can you give us a bit of a yeah, a bit of an explanation in of what the process is from once the grapes come through the door? What happens after that? Okay, so yeah, they come in the door of the shed here. We've got a crusher over there. Uh, they get tipped in there and they get all uh, crushed up, de-stemmed, um, and then depending on whether it's a red or a white, they go through a uh, different uh, process um, of either fermented with the skins or we take the skins off for the whites. Yeah. Um, and yeah, then it's a variety of fermentation, um, a week, two weeks, depending on the type of wine. Yeah. and um, yeah, into tanks and then eventually either bottled from the tanks or into barrels. Amazing. And what, what's the oldest wine that you, you have here still in, still in a barrel? Uh, it's actually this one oh. here that we're standing in front okay. of. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so this is our uh, white port or yes. our white fortified, I should say. Yep. And um, yeah, it's up to 18 years old. So it's a blend of different vintages and yeah, the oldest is 18 years old. Amazing. Well, I, I believe we're going to have a little bit of a taste, I think, aren't we? Gonna have a yeah, little that's bit. right. That's straight a couple out of the of glasses here. You. Beautiful. Now, this is something I've never done, is drink, uh, drink something straight out of a barrel. So oh, I'm really looking forward to this. First thing. I hope you like it. <laughs> <laughs> smells amazing. I can smell it already. It smells so, amazing. Bring your glass over yep. so I don't lose it all. There you go. All there right. you go. And we've got another one coming up here. Okay. Oh, it smells so good. Yeah, it's lovely honey butterscotch sort of flavour and smell to it, this one. Mmm. Oh, now I'll give you that one there. All right. Cheers. All right, well, cheers. Thank you yeah. very much. Cheers. It's amazing. No worries. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, 
Ooh. Nice and smooth. Beautiful. Mm. Oh, syrupy, it's so nice. Yeah, it's pretty good. Mm. Gets better with age too. So that, that one's expected to outlive us all. Uh, is it? Last okay. Yeah. <laughs> last, right, wow. Um, and I think you've got a bottle of it down here as well, haven't you? So the bottle's very interesting. Look at that, beautiful. Yeah, so we, we've bottled it into a saxophone-shaped bottle. Yep. Uh, that's a tribute to our jazz days that we have here. Uh, yep, uh, yep. We also do a, um, a tawny fortified into a trumpet-shaped bottle. Oh, fantastic. So ja what's the jazz theme? Is it the family big, big jazz fans as well? No, not at all. It's just <laughs> <laughs> back about 20 years ago, um, yeah, we started having a few jazz days out here. So yep. second Sunday of every month. Brilliant. Uh, yeah, it's been going for over 20 years. Um, we have grown to like jazz over that time. Yeah, I bet you. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, it's a pretty popular event and lots of people come out for it. Oh, it's fantastic. And how much would this bottle sell for, do you think? Uh, it's about $50, that bottle. About $50, yeah. okay. Oh, it's a beautiful bottle. And just tell us a little bit about some about your wines in terms of where where you where you sell your wines outside of the cellar door here. Where else do do, do the wines end up going to? Uh, so mostly here at cellar door, we yep. do have small um, section of online sales. Yeah. Uh, other than that, a few local bottle shops and restaurants in the local area. So um, pretty limited to uh, this area. Yep. And um, so makes it special, I guess, when you. You come on holidays to Port Macquarie, it's like a souvenir to take away. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I'm sure tastings as well are a big part of this as well. So you've got the cellar door inside. Yep. Um, so big tasting program too. Yeah, that's right. So uh, all of our wine range is available for tasting. Uh, at the moment, we're doing our tasting in the form of a uh, paddle that you can take around the ground. So you can sit above the maze, oh, relax with your, your wine tasting. And um, yeah, we also have cheese and meat platters that you can enjoy with your wine. Oh, sounds like a lovely afternoon. Yeah. Now I heard here on the grapevine, get a terrible judge <laughs> again, I'm getting a habit for this, yeah. uh, that there's also a, a pretty nice little chocolate shop going around here somewhere, which uh, I'm really looking forward to having a look at too. Can you yeah. tell us a bit about that? Yeah, so uh, we have our chocolate lady Tash, she sh uh, shares the premises here. Yep. Uh, she makes all her chocolates by hand on, on site here. All right, fantastic. Well, I think I'm going to go and have a look at that now. So, um, yeah, just wanted to say thanks again so much for giving us a good look around today, um, getting to sample some of this beautiful, uh, beautiful fortified. I think I'm going to have to have another sip now. Yeah, go for it. It's mm. all yours. Mm. So good. And I think I might even be sneaking one of these bottles out of the shop before you leave as well. Yeah, Paying for it, obviously. <laughs> no but thanks again, Ian. Oh, and thanks we'll, for uh, coming. You're welcome. We'll see you next time. Okay, cheers. All right, cheers. See ya. All right, so walking in now to Babalilla's and I'm going to meet Tash, who's the chocolatier and the owner here, and uh, here she is, speak of the devil. Hey, Tash. Hey, mate, how are you? Very good, how are you doing? Oh, pretty well, thank you. Well, what a wonderful place this is. Thank you very much. Oh, it's amazing. There's so much to look at, that's for sure, and that's before you get to the chocolates. Um, my first question has got to be, um, what, why the name Babalilla? Well, Baba is um, a grandmother for Russian. Lila is my mother's name. So it's actually something that my mother taught me, ah. hence the name. I see. Well, <laughs> yes. I can see you've got lots of Russian memorabilia around. We've got, it's a, yeah, as I say, there's so many things to look at, particularly over this side. Um, so tell yes. us a little bit about some of the items we've got in here. So these are things from, well, things I've collected, things from my own heritage from when I was a child, the traditional babushka dolls, of course. Yep. Some of Mum's things, like her, her old shoes as well. Beautiful. Some of the books that um, I actually used to use when I went to Russian school oh. as a little kid. <laughs> so Amazing. And this is, I'm guessing this is your beautiful mum up here? This gorgeous one definitely is my mother. Yeah, what a beautiful homage to your mum. Yes. Fantastic. And how long have you had the chocolate shop here? The chocolate shop here has only been about three years. I've yep. had the business for over 13 years. Third, okay, yep. So you are a chocolatier by, by trade? I am a graphic designer by oh, trade, <laughs> you know. Go but figure. But you did the big pivot. <laughs> we did the, you know, complete 360 degree turnaround yep. and became a chocolatier. Mm, amazing. Yeah. It was something that um, I actually found in amongst some of mum's old things. Ah. There was the recipe. Yep. There was, you know, the little old fork that she used to use for making chocolate that she actually handmade herself. Oh, wow. There was the foils, you know, so everything was there yep. ready for me just to take it on. 
clearly it was in your DNA from day one. It certainly was. <laughs> <laughs> now tell us a little bit about some of the chocolates that you've got on offer here today because I can see quite a lot of different uh, types and uh, yeah, all manner of beautiful things here. So give us a bit of a rundown of what we've got on offer. So traditional Russian chocolates, we have some flavours that, you know, they're the recipes that mum taught me. Yep. But then using the same techniques, I've actually incorporated some of our local produce. Ah, amazing. So there's things like the lemon myrtle and the aniseed myrtle and the wattle seed and yep. Tasmanian pepperberry, Davidson plum. So these I actually source locally. Mm. So I wanted to have a fusion of you know, both heritages, I suppose, you know, yep. of the Russian and the Australian. Yep. And I wanted to support our local community oh, as well. what a great idea. So these are actually sourced 20 kilometres up the road. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's amazing, yeah. Mm. So Davidson Plum and Coco. Incredible. And over here I can see we've got some uh, liquid cho looking chocolates. Liquid chocolates. Can we have chocolates. a look at those? Because what's that all about? Can. That's uh, so just drawing liquid. me in. I can feel it drawing oh. me in. <laughs> so this liquid chocolate is actually it's coloured chocolate yep and we've started to do chocolate art workshops ah, right so these chocolate art workshops like we've just finished today <laughs> and the theme was um constellations it was part of the port macquarie art walk okay yep and yep. what we ended up choosing to do was um van gogh's starry night so people actually painted starry night in chocolate but the fun thing was, was just watching them from a distance as they're painting away and then uh, <laughs> they're painting away. And, and Brilliant. It was a lot more eating than painting. I can imagine. And yeah. what happens at the, at the end when they finish the painting? Do they then, do they then eat the painting or what happens? Basically. Basically. Yes. <laughs> yes so it's, right. uh, it's a, it'll never be anything of value because it'll be already gone. It's exactly. no family heirloom happening there. No family heirloom <laughs> whatsoever. Just a lovely memory. Oh, amazing. And, and so, a lot of sugar rush. A lot of sugar <laughs> lot rush, of sugar yeah. Rush I'm sure there was well. a lot of, and that, is that for all, all ages? Or it's all ages, all abilities. Yep. Look, we yep. had a little baby here playing with it all. <laughs> Brilliant. But we've had, you know, had um, elderly people, we've had artists, yep. we've had um, disability groups as well, yep. which has been fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's, it's look, it's a very therapeutic um, mm. medium actually. It's, oh yeah, it's been wonderful. Who doesn't love chocolate? The, yeah, that's right. And I mean, and this is like no boundaries with chocolate. Yeah, let's yeah. Let's paint it. Let's put it on our faces. <laughs> and it's wonderful. Oh, and. Give me a little bit of an insight as to what goes on behind here. We've got a little production area in there. So here everything is um, made by hand. Yep. So you actually don't need a great deal of room to um, manufacture. So the manufacturing, you, 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 I have um, pots that melt the chocolate, that's yep. about it. Okay. Then the rest of it's just all done by hand. All done by hand. So everything, like even my mixtures, I hand mix them. Yep. Um, then you know, I hand roll each one and weigh each one. Then you hand dipping each one. Oh. Used with mum's fork. Of course. Of course. So literally every chocolate is made with love. There's no yeah. There's love, no. patience. Is love well. and patience. Age patience is a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I know you've been pretty busy recently. It's obviously school holidays right yeah. now. There's a lot going on. Um, how Indeed, it yes. must have put a bit of pressure on you from the from the hand making perspective. <laughs> Indeed, <laughs> it's good for the arthritis. You know. <laughs> how many chocolates do you think you've made? I don't know. In the last couple of weeks, would you say? Look, in the past couple of weeks, probably close to five thousand chocolates by hand. Five thousand. That's with two people as well. Wow, so. it's a lot of chocolates. It is a lot of chocolates. But a lot of smiles as well, I'm sure. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and it feels, I mean, we've been here for the last couple of days. Port Macquarie feels like it's absolutely booming. There's so many visitors yeah. around. It's got a really good buzz around the place. What is it, yeah. do you think, that makes Port Macquarie so appealing? I guess as a resident and, you know, well, probably as a uh, resident firstly. Well, as a resident, um, I mean, I work here in the bush, yeah. but I live on the beach. Yeah. So I think that's a really big draw card is mm. that, you know, the... The geography around here is is just so versatile. Mm. You can do everything from paddling mm. to hiking. It's 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 wonderful. We have still a lot of um, rest, good restaurants and cafes as well. Yep. Fantastic wineries. Baker Winery, of course. Yes, of course. <laughs> just saying. Of course, just yeah. saying. Uh, yeah, you know. And bubble out of the chocolates, my God. Of course, <laughs> of, course. of course. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think it's just, it's a very um, versatile place to come yeah. and visit for holidays. Yeah. Well, it seems like a really yeah. warm, friendly place too. Yeah, uh, that's, look, that's a draw card for me actually, is mm. the community. And the communities, um, we support each other a lot. Yep. Businesses support each other a lot. Yep. Um, which actually keeps us functioning, uh, it keeps us functioning better than if you were trying to do it all on your own. Yeah, yeah. 
which much, is fantastic. Much nicer way to do things. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And have you noticed a lot of different kinds of visitors coming in recent months? I guess since yeah. through these crazy times we live in at the moment, have you seen yeah. a lot of new visitors coming through? Look, uh, as soon as restrictions were lifted in June, people from Sydney started coming up a lot. Mm. You know, we started nicknaming them the three days because they because it was a, a good distance from Sydney to come up for just a few days. Yeah. So people, I think, felt like they wanted to just break free of the bubble. Mm. And, and this was just a really good place to come to because, like I said, for one, just the, um, the different geography as well. Mm. And it was close for them as well. Mm. And they spent, they've been spending a lot of money, which has been fantastic for our economy. Amazing, yeah. It's really bumping sort of the mid-north coast economy up. Oh, that's great news. Yeah. Well, I'm sure they'll be going back and telling their friends to, you know, this is a great place to visit. Yeah. Well, we've had that a lot too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the, every week we're getting something like that come, you know, yeah. come from people. Oh, that's which, great. Yeah, yeah. Now, you've got to tell me, I know as a chocolatier this must be like the million dollar question, okay. but do you have a favourite chocolate here? Of course I have a favourite <laughs> chocolate here. Can I show you which you one You certainly can. So, and, but you might have to try it. Oh, okay. <laughs> twist my, uh, so twist my rubber arm. I'll come around this side. Oh, is this? the prune and brandy chocolate. <sighs> yep. So the prune and brandy chocolate is, has this lovely soft centre encased in a, in a whole prune. Mm. This is the traditional Russian one. Okay. This one, excuse me if I cry, is <laughs> the one that um, my mother remembered with, sorry, when oh. she had dementia. Oh. Sorry. So it's something that... Um, it's very special to you. It is. Yeah. yeah. So well, you have, have to try well, this. Well, I feel very privileged that, yeah, that yes. you're giving this to me now. Mm. Thank so you. So that's something that she taught me. Yeah. And it's done the traditional way. It's wrapped the traditional way oh. that mum taught me. And Beautiful. And it's the one thing that when uh, she was in hospital, I just said, you know, mum, remember this. And she did. She did. Yeah. You know, so it was... Yeah. How magic. And how magic that you can keep this going and bring so much happiness yeah. into other people's Thank lives. Sorry about the tears. Oh, that's all right. Oh, it happens. Oh, it's <laughs> yeah. great to Prune share this moment. Prune and brandy in tears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, all in one, nibbles. Oh, I take a nice big bite. Take a nice big bite. And, okay. and, then, and then just oh. enjoy. Mm. Yeah. Oh. They are amazing. Mm. <laughs> that is quite a mouthful mm. and a very delicious mouthful. <laughs> that's mm. good. <laughs> Amazing. Ah, oh, beautiful. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. It was really, pleasure. really beautiful. I'm going to eat the rest now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. Oh, I'll give you the wrapper back if that's all right, Jeff. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, thank you so much for showing us around. My pleasure, Matt. Absolute privilege to meet you. And all the very best with everything. It looks like you're going from strength to strength. Definitely. And continuing yeah. that beautiful legacy of your mum. Yeah. Thanks thank you so much, much, Tash. Thanks for thank letting me tell the story. Oh, thank you. So that's it from us today at Bago Maze and Winery. Um, it's been a really lovely adventure actually exploring all that they've got on offer here. There's so many things to do. You can laze around on the grass, graze on some cheese, have some beautiful wines. There really is something for everyone here. So bring the family, again, bring the oldies, bring whoever. I think everyone's going to be entertained who comes to this place. Definitely put it on your must-do list when you do come to Port Macquarie next time.